I'm going to show you how to create three super fun text animation effects using React and the Framer Motion Animation Library. Through these examples, you'll learn some of the basics of Framer Motion, as well as some of the tips and tricks that I've learned from working with this library over the past couple of years. My name is Greg Fine, and here at The Code Creative, we get into the more creative aspects of coding. If that sounds intriguing to you, make sure to like and subscribe. And now, let's write some code. All right, so for this first example, we're going to start with the classic slide up and fade in animation that we're going to apply to this text. Now, here I have my component, and I'm simply returning an H1. I've already gone ahead and imported motion from Framer Motion. And motion is the basic component that you work with in Framer Motion, and this is the thing that turns normal HTML or SVG elements into animatable HTML or SVG elements. So what we're going to do is we're going to take motion and prepend our elements with motion dot. And now what we've done is basically taken our H1 and turned it into a supercharged H1. And I'm going to show you why that is right now by introducing the three kind of meat and potato props that you use with Framer Motion. And these are called Initial, Animate, and Transition. So let's take a look at how to use Initial first. So we'll do an Initial prop. And inside of initial, we're going to define the properties that we want to animate and give them their initial starting values. So since we're doing a slide up and a fade in, we want to slide up along the Y axis. So let's start with that. And by the way, Framer Motion has some shorthands for various transforms like X and Y. So this here would be the equivalent of doing a transform translate Y. But what we want to do for the initial state is move this text down a little bit on the Y axis. So let's do 25 pixels. And if we save, we should see this text move. And then since we want to do a fade in, we're going to start with an opacity of zero, which is going to make this element invisible. Now let's get our animation going. Let's use the animate prop. In our animate prop, we're going to take that Y property and we're going to specify the value that we want it to animate to. So since we want to slide it up, we're going to go from the initial 25 pixels down on the Y axis back up to zero. And let's animate this up to its full opacity of 1. Now just with these two props, we should already be able to see our animation. And we do, and you can see it's pretty quick. And that's because Framer Motion, out of the box, provides a 0.3 second duration time. But with that third prop I mentioned, the transition prop, we can customize that duration. So we can do our own duration time. Let's say we want to do 1 second. And there's many different options we can put in here. But for this example, we'll just use Ease, and we'll specify an easing. We'll do Ease and Out, just to make this animation a little bit less mechanical. And let's check it out. All right, so here's our second example. And this one is more of a typewriter effect, or kind of a text reveal effect. And if we take a look at our components, you can see I've already added all the code for this one. Now that you're familiar with these basic props, initial, animate, and transition, we can just kind of examine what they're doing here. Oh yeah, and by the way, I chose to create this one as an H2, not for any special reason, but just to reiterate that point that you can prepend the motion dot to any HTML or SVG element. Wow. Now to achieve this text reveal effect, we start with an initial width of zero. So let's take a look at our element first. So here's our H2. And you can see the full width that it occupies here. So we got 0 on the left and 100% on the right. And if you take a look at our initial prop, we're starting the width at 0. And then we're expanding that width all the way out to the right to 100%. And you might also notice here that we're using the style prop, which is just a React thing. But here we're setting overflow to hidden. And that's because even if we reduce the width of this H2, its text content is still going to overflow. That is, it's not going to be clipped. So in order to prevent seeing that overflow, we set it to hidden. And then the white space property is being set to no wrap. And that's just simply so that we get our text on a single line. And then again, you'll see that transition prop that we introduced in the last example. And here we're setting a little bit longer of a duration. This is two seconds. And we're using our favorite ease, ease in out. And here's what we've got. Now the cool thing about Framer Motion is that when we animate properties like width, Framer Motion is actually going to animate those things using more performant transforms under the hood. And that helps create more performant, smoother, less janky animations. 
All right, here's example number three. This one is color changing text. And you can see we're actually cycling through a few different colors. So here we have a motion H1. And again, we've got our initial animate and transition props. And what I want to show you here in the animate prop is that we're not just animating to a single color, but actually for color, we're using an array here and we're setting up four different hex values. And this is an example of using keyframes in frame or motion. So here, because we're setting the duration to two seconds, frame or motion is going to take that two second duration and split it equally amongst these keyframe values. And in the transition prop, we're using a new property called repeat and setting it to JavaScript special infinity keyword. And this is why when we save and we play the animation, you can see that it keeps cycling on and on in a loop forever for eternity. For eternity. If you're interested in learning how to bring your web pages to life with cool animations, GSAP, and scrolly telling techniques, check out my course, Scrolly Telling 101. Since I launched the course, the response has been amazing, with students commenting on the wealth of web dev tips and tricks included in the lessons. I'm going to leave a link down below for you, and you can start by checking out some of the free preview videos there. I think you're going to love it.